Good morning, everyone. Today is Thursday, and it's April 23rd. It's kind of crazy how fast the days are flying through, even though everything's so different than what we're used to. But the weather has been so beautiful. It's been so nice, and I hope you're getting a chance to go out and enjoy it. I have a Bible story for you again today. And once again, this may be a story you know, or it may not be. So this is coming from 1 Samuel. And yesterday we learned about David and David and Goliath, a story you probably knew. I hope you got a chance to make the little slingshots with the Dixie Cups. I bet that was a lot of fun for you. And I have another activity. But before we do that, let's get into the Word of God. So I am in 1 Samuel, and I am on chapter 18. So after David had defeated Goliath, Saul was overcome with joy for David, and he said, you need to come live at the palace with me. And David was like, well, I've got to take care of my family. And so Saul took uh, some food and some donkeys and gave them to David's family and said, I really want David to come live in the palace with me. And so David went and lived in the palace and became one of Saul's servants. Now, David had this incredible ability to calm Saul down. Saul loved music, and David had an incredible voice. He could sing, and he could play musical instruments. And he would make a request, and David would just start singing. And David would make up songs, and he would just sing. Do you know anybody that has just this incredible voice that you just love to hear them sing? I do. I know several people that I love their voice. I love the soothing tone. One of my favorite Christian singers is Lauren Daigle. I love her. I love the words that um, are in her music and how she just comes across with uh, her praise for God. I love her music. And then there's several others that I just really enjoy as well. Well, when David went to live in the palace, he got to meet Saul's son. Saul had several children, and one of them was Jonathan. And Jonathan and David hit it off. They became immediate friends, and not just friends. I mean friends, best friends. And they loved being together. They loved it so much. Now, Jonathan never really had any friends because he was kind of confined to the palace. And so when David showed up, all of a sudden, Jonathan has this person he could talk to. And he heard about all that David had done. And he was so impressed with David, but even more so, he was impressed with how humble David was. And so David and Jonathan became these incredible friends. And Jonathan gave him many gifts to say, thank you. And I love you as my friend. You're just, it's so amazing that God would give you, give you to me as a friend and that you could come live in the palace. Now I can imagine these two boys running through the palace and the games that they would play and the antics that they would do. But David was a servant and he was Saul's servant, Jonathan's dad's servant. But even still, they got along as if they were brothers. So do you have a friend that you think of as your best friend and you can tell anything to that person and they won't tell anybody else? Or that person, you can hang out, do anything, just sit and talk or go play a ball game and it's just the best, the best time ever. That's what Jonathan and David were. They were just these incredible friends and they were there for each other and they trusted and relied on each other in a very difficult time. Saul was starting to become more and more jealous of David because David 
had an incredible relationship with God, and God was allowing David to have victories in battle that Saul couldn't get. And it was making him jealous. And he could see the relationship between his son Jonathan and David, and he was jealous of that relationship because he didn't have a friend like that. And so Saul's heart was turning dark. His jealousy was getting worse and worse and worse. And Jonathan and David relied on each other. I hope you have a friend like that. I hope you have a very special friend that you can talk to and tell things to. And sometimes it's hard to be with that person all the time um, because of where you live or um, because you can't get together with them other than at school. But I hope you have somebody in your life that you can count on as your friend. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you created friendships as a gift to us. And thank you for the friendship between Jonathan and David to show us what true friendship is. And we pray for our friends, keep them safe during this time, and let them know how much we love them. Amen. Okay, so for today's activity, it's a little bit... It's all on you. It's all on you. So I want you to think about your friend or your friends. And I want you to do something special for your friend or your friends. And it depends on what you're capable of, whether you can call this friend on the phone and talk to them, or maybe Zoom with them or face chat with them. Maybe you can take something over to their house and leave it on the front step and ring the doorbell and, you know, walk away. You know, maybe take them a plate of cookies and, and knock on the door and just leave that gift for them. Or maybe it's plant a flower, you know, take some flowers over to them. Maybe making a card and mailing it to them. That would be fun. You know, we've been trying to make cards for people who um, can't get out. Maybe your grandparents or people in nursing homes or people far away. What about your friends? I bet your friends would love to receive a card from you. The other thing I have here is just a little notebook. And in my house, we have little tiny notebooks like this all over, even some smaller than this one and this is a brand new notebook and it's got a lot of pages in it. But what I was thinking about with this notebook is it could be your drawing notebook of things to do with you and your friends. And you can make one page for each friend. You can say, my friend Sally and talk about, you know, why is Sally your friend? Um, what's something special about Sally? You know, or draw a picture of a time that you had, a special memory you have of your time with Sally or whoever your friend is. And, you know, just, this is a really thick notebook. You know, maybe even just make some special notes about anybody. And you know what? One of the best friends, the best friend you can ever have is Jesus Christ. Jesus is such a good friend and he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He is always there for you. So I hope if you start a friendship notebook or a friendship journal, you list Jesus Christ as one of your friends because he is there for you. He will always listen to you. He will never leave you. And uh, he gives you blessings each and every day. Just look outside. All of the green grass and the flowers and the trees and the birds, those are all gifts that God has given to you because he loves you so much and calls you friend. You guys have a great day. I love you. I miss you. Enjoy the weather. I know there's going to be a little bit of rain coming, but the rain just means more flowers and more green grass and more fun. So you guys have a great time. Love you all.